Hey guys, welcome back to Story Debrief. I'm Exotic Owl, and yes, I did in fact cut my hair since the last time you've seen me. And this video is kind of like, I'm just making it, like just like right now, the same day that it's getting posted. I am just made it, recorded it, edited everything. So that's why this is gonna be a little more chaotic and it is not gonna be as fully edited, if you know what I mean. Anyways, in honor of today being the day season two premieres of Only Murders in the Building, I am gonna do a season one recap. I've only just rewatched it yesterday and I've, um, can you hear all that paper? Yeah? Yeah, there's, I've written four different, four full pages of bullet points of all the key points I think are in it. And if you haven't watched Only Murders in the Building, here is a little quick synopsis that I've googled. <laughs> Three strangers share an obsession with true crime and suddenly find themselves wrapped in one when a grisly death occurs inside their exclusive Upper West Side apartment building. The trio suspects murder and employs their precise knowledge of true crime to investigate the truth. Perhaps even more explosive are the lies they tell one another. Soon the endangered trio comes to realize a killer might be living among them as they race to decipher the mounting clues before it's too late. So. With that out of the way, I'll explain a little bit about each episode, how long the runtime is, all that other jazz. Each episode is about 30 minutes long, the shortest being 26 minutes and the longest being 36 minutes. So if you haven't still watched Only Murders in the Building and you're still watching this video, I highly recommend it. It's a really fun watch. But if you don't want to and you just want to jump into the second season, which is kind of weird, not gonna lie, then continue watching if you are okay with missing key points or you don't want to rewatch season one, then continue watching. So without further ado, spoiler alerts, but well, let's go straight into the season one recap. So in the first episode, it starts off with poli a police force coming in, storming the building, and we see Oliver and Charles running down the stairs trying to get to Mabel, who then we see on the floor with blood all over her, and a dead body in front of her and she does say it is not what it looks like or it is not what you think one of those then we cut into their narrations so first we get charles i believe who says basically it's not the big city you should be afraid of it's the boondocks which later gets revealed that that's part of the narration of the podcast that they are making regarding the murder in the building. Then we see Oliver, I honestly didn't write anything down about what he said in his narration, but I think it was something along the lines of referencing this video about this guy on the stairs and falling down and then getting back up. Anyways, Mabel, then we cut into Mabel's narration, which is an interesting one to say the least. She does say that in order for her to go to sleep, she imagines a guy breaking into her apartment and he's just over her and then she like kicks him in the nuts and grabs her knitting needle and just stabs the hell out of him and then she goes right to sleep. After those narrations, we obviously know the characters a little more now. Then we go straight to the building and they are all in the same elevator at the same time and they're going up the elevator and then they see the victim aka tim kono enter the elevator with a trash bag we do see an orange cat outside which we soon realize is evelyn but yeah we see them the victim they all see him they all know he's there and he's talking on the phone about a package all that other jazz and then he leaves and then they all go into their respective apartment room floors and their apartments and then we see that they all listen to the same podcast called not okay not all is not okay in oklahoma I almost butchered that probably i did as they're listening to this podcast a fire alarm goes off they all get hurried out charles goes down these stairs and sees a guy with a tie-dye hoodie going up the stairs and they all meet up at a restaurant well not really meet up just so happen to all go to the same restaurants and then they all realize that they all listen to the same podcast and so they just bond over that and discuss about the multiple true kind podcasts that they've listened to and charles and oliver open up a bit while Mabel is still a bit uh, cautious and doesn't speak about her past at all. 
but as we see later on in the season, not really any of them speak about their past or whatever problems they are being faced with. <laughs> After all that, they go back to their apartment building and then they hear that they found a dead body and so they decide to go and investigate. So they go up the building and see Tim Kono, the guy they, they just saw in the elevator, dead. And so they talk to a detective because a detective walks in and sees them and is like, oh, you guys are one of those true crime nut brains. And they're like, basically shoot away. And they believe that Tim Kono is murdered while the detective believes that it's a suicide, like textbook suicide. So they all go into their respective rooms again and then Mabel and Charles think of the same thing about the trash bag because each floor has a garbage chute. Man, I feel like I go into so much detail right now. <laughs> I should really keep this going. I should loosen this somehow. Oh, okay. I'll try my best. So they all investigate this murder. They go look through Tim Kono's trash and Oliver is doing his own thing, thinking that the whole podcast and investigating the murder is thrown out the window because they find notes in the bag that suggest it could be suicide, but that's about it. But then Charles and Mabel while Oliver is doing his thing. Investigate even further because they remember about the package Tim Kona was talking about. So they go into Bunny's apartment because Mabel knows that T Tim Kono's packages over here is that Tim Kono's packages sometimes get delivered to her and so they go find that package which they did find and they figure out that it's a ring inside that package that he was waiting for. Then later on in the episode it is reve revealed that Mabel knows Tim Kono. She knows Tim Kono. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. In fact Tim Kono and Mabel have this past that Tim Kono did not want to talk about and Mabel is very persistent and they both agree that they don't know each other while they're in the building. So that's why you don't see them interact at all when both of them are in the elevator. And something about the past just doesn't let Mabel open up to these two old men, which in all, like, who would open up to two old white men, right? Especially a Latina. Like, it just makes sense. <laughs> Mabel also does record something about her knowing Tim Kono and telling his story basically and records this, saves it, and titles it in case I'm next, which we don't even get touched on any further throughout the, the season. We then learn that Charles, sort of Charles, but mainly Oliver is suspicious of Mabel because she is twitchy as he says and they're still going forward with this podcast and they're still recording and all that other jazz we learn a bit about oliver's past and of course a bit about mabel's past and not until later do we learn about charles past which they have secrets <laughs> so their first suspect through this whole murder is actually Howard the cat guy. And why is that? Well, Tim Kono did threaten to shoot his cat, and so Howard knew that he had a gun. As for why this later doesn't get picked up and he isn't the lead suspect anymore is because he faints at the sight of blood when Charles starts bleeding from his nose. So there is that. We do meet Jane in the elevator and well Jane and Charles start flirting I guess. Yeah I guess it is flirting right? Yeah that's what they were doing. They were flirting. <laughs> then we see Mabel finds a note with a time and date and a location which she has no idea what it's for, who is this person that Tim Kono was going to meet. Then we see Oliver get into the elevator with Sting, the lyricist, lead singer, I don't know, of the police and he says that he hates dogs. And what happens next? Well, um, Oliver's dog, Winnie, gets poisoned, so now he is a prime suspect on this murder case. Well, that happened. <laughs> so before they go and interview Sting to see if he was the murder suspect, or he was the murderer, they go to Sin Cinda. Cinda, yeah, that's her name. Cinda, the host and narrator and true crime queen of all is not okay in Oklahoma, the podcast that the three of them are obsessed with at the moment. So 
they ask for her advice and all that jazz and so after they get this advice they then go and interview sting and it turns out that sting does believe he murdered him but no killed him or might as well have pulled the trigger something along those lines because he does say to tim kono on a in a fit of rage that he should go and kill himself so but he actually isn't the murderer because well he was distraught about that whole thing he thought he thought he basically pushed tim kona off the edge and was like shit that happened because of me but then he learns that tim kona was murdered and he's like oh so that wasn't me he was literally killed all right cool so there's that mabel then finds a lead in the note that she found and decides to go and follow that lead but charles and oliver learn from oliver's son will that mabel lied about not knowing Tim Kono and lied about him other things as well and so they decide to go and find Mabel and they actually do find Mabel and start following her in the car and see tie-dye guy the guy with the tie-dye hoodie yep because as it turns out the guy in the tie-dye hoodie is Oscar which is Mabel's friend which they all knew Tim Kono that was the friend group there was also another person that died a long time ago which is part of her past Zoe. So Oliver and Charles follow Mabel and Oscar and their Mabel is following this lead. Oscar is like, can't you just leave the past in the past, please? But then ends up just following her anyways. And they learn a little bit more about what Tim Kono was actually trying to do. And what he was trying to do was take down this black market jewelry and Mabel finally comes clean to Oliver and Charles. So there's that. And actually the black jeweler is named the black market jeweler is named Angel, so that's that's an important part of this whole story. And so they go all well. Charles and Oliver goes back to the apartment building, and Mabel is basically out of the podcast. But then later on, she's like, "No, I have to finish this," because she has to get through with this until she is back on the podcast. But during that time with Mabel and her mother. Man, I feel like I skipped so many things there. During that time, Mabel was with her mother and Oliver and Charles obviously now know her mother. Oliver and Charles now know Mabel's mother and Mabel is talking to her mother and all that jazz and, you know, all that jazz. <laughs> Man, I've said jazz way too many times. But um, Oliver gets called by Teddy, who is going to be the sponsor of the podcast. And well, Cinda goes on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and talks about the podcast and is like, ha ha ha, don't you think it's funny? Their first lead suspect is Sting from the police. Man, they're so idiotic that kind of kind of stuff. Oliver thinks this is like a bad thing because they're basically dissing on the podcast but he sees it as a good thing and starts funding them more money and is like here here's a 50k for the next three episodes make good on the promise and Charles points out on the check that it is the company that he um, wrote down for it because he said it wasn't he has two companies was Angel Inc and Charles points it out and is like that's the name of the black market jeweler there's got to be something in there that we have to look into and so yeah they do Mabel gets back on board with the whole podcast thing because she wants to finish it through and so they're back on making the episodes okay we're like almost there I feel like I have scrambling everywhere uh, sorry for these weird pauses but i'm really trying right now <laughs> so with their lead being the demises now thinking tim kono was killed by teddy or the demises they investigate teddy's apartment and they almost get caught by theo but when investigating their apartment but theo also knows that they're onto them so he also breaks into their apartment building aka i think it was charles apartments and he sees the murder board and sees all the clues and the links that they have made and Teddy's all like, nah, don't worry, we keep our enemies closer, obviously. That whole saying. But Theo's like, okay, fine, whatever. We then learn that Theo was the one responsible for Zoe's death. That's right, Zoe, the friend of Mabel, Tim Kono, and Oscar. He was the one responsible, and Teddy basically threatened Tim Kono. And that is why Tim Kono didn't say anything, because he did see the whole altercation. But with his life on the line, and also Mabel's life on the line, he says nothing to the police and that's why he's been looking for the ring 
I forgot to mention there was a ring. <laughs> There's this emerald ring that Zoe broke in. Zoe and all of the friends broke into Teddy's apartment and grabbed and stole and Theo was in charge of getting the emerald ring back and during that Zoe was already having a bad night so yeah she gets kind of shoved off the roof. Accidentally, I might add, but still very, very bad. So with that, Charles goes and has a fun night with Jane, while Oliver and Mabel are investigating the funeral home because they now know that Teddy, the Demises, are grave robbers. They take jewelry from dead bodies. They investigate the funeral, right? And But they get caught by Theo, who he ties up and puts in the back of the van and drives over to a dumpster and meets up with Teddy, aka his dad. And his dad basically threatens Mabel and Oliver's life, threatens their life, saying that the last episode must be an episode where they're were just that they found more clues that Tim Kono was not a murder victim but instead killed himself. It was a suicide. So um yeah there's that but Teddy does say that he had nothing to do with Tim Kono's death and that he wasn't responsible or knows anything about that but he wants his business and the Zoe stuff to be buried deep underground. So with that out the way Mabel and Oliver are put back into the apartment and told to finish that last episode and make sure to do it before 7 a.m or to make sure it's finished at 7 a.m and they actually do meet fans of their podcast and they're like huge fans <laughs> but fans that are a bit skeptical of the whole crew of the whole trio about solving this murder i, I totally forgot to mention this but we do get a episode about the detective the detective has suspicions now the phone that she had of tim kono she was sure that she sent it to IT but it never got sent and the forensic stuff has never been submitted so something fishy is going around there so she's suspicious now and decides to send the phone to Mabel and they have the phone they look through the phone mm, well not them mainly Jane and Charles look through the phone and find things and notice that Tim Kona was a very meticulous record keeper as Jane put it so as they're trying to brush this episode out because their life is on the line they decide to have this tight case around Teddy and also tell Williams, the detective, about their super tight case, but they're told specific questions and how to get those answers. It has to be a super tight case, she reminds them, and is like, don't say that I did anything to help with this at all. Like, keep it on the down low. So then they crack down on Teddy as being the murderer of Tim Kono, while Jane goes back to her apartment angrily because Charles takes their side about them being right on Teddy and Jane has been gearing them towards Howard, basically steering them away from all the clues that they've already found. So there's that. So Jane goes angrily down to her apartment and then finds this note that says, I'm watching you. So they take down Teddy and he gets charged for the murder of Zoe and the black jewelry market. But they celebrate a bit too early because, well, as Charles is trying to apologize to Jane, he goes with goes to her apartment with a bouquet of flowers and sees Jane has been stabbed. Then days pass or weeks, who knows how long pass, but Jane is on the recovery road and so and so mabel and oliver are like just doing their thing charles is taking care of jane but then detective williams gets a tox report that she's been getting done on the download and says that tim kono was poisoned and dead long before the gunshot so now the case is back open and the trio have to retract what they said about teddy but not the whole thing only the murder of tim kono so they're back on the they're back on the board trying to figure everything out and well Pataki, Charles' stunt double, comes in and that dredges up some of Charles' past so yeah there is that uh, but Pataki does give some insight on what to look for when it comes to finding this murderer and she does say that the murder was a crime of passion because it had to be premeditated it he was gonna be poisoned and the fire alarm happened and there was a gunshot like that all had to be planned out which she does bring a very good point so 
Oliver and Mabel listen to her and is like, okay, you're right. You're right. You're onto something here. So they look into that even further. But Charles doesn't go with them or any of that because during the building meeting, they have an intense argument. So Mabel and Oliver are basically left to try and figure this whole thing out. And so they go back and Oliver looks through Tim Kono's sex toys again and finds that there's a bassoon cleaner and they're like who has a bassoon like why does Tim Kono have a bassoon cleaner and then they put the pieces all together and it's like holy shit it's Jane when Mabel and Oliver find and put those pieces together Charles is coming back from going to the symphony that Jane is in thinking that she was first chair but in reality she is not first chair she is placed in second place again which she does mention a lot that she hates being in second and his nose is bleeding and he runs back to his apartment building his apartment room and Oliver and Mabel find him there tell Charles about what they discovered gives him a warning all that jazz but Charles doesn't believe any of it and instead stays in his apartment room while Mabel and Oliver go into Jane's apartment and find the knife that she stabbed herself with that's right she had the audacity to stab herself with the knife. Tim Kono and Jane have literally been seeing each other and it is revealed that Tim Kono broke up with Jane and Jane, after two days of being broken up, offers a drink for him. That's how he gets poisoned and that's why he has a bag full of stuff because Tim Kono doesn't believe that he left anything there but Jane said that he did so they're there together. He gets poisoned, he goes back up to his apartment. Jane pulls the fire alarm yeah there's this whole confession scene that happens and she confesses this all to charles who has been secretly recording her the whole time because he knew and he connected the dots after mabel and oliver leave and found the knife what he doesn't know is that he didn't get poisoned by the drink this time instead he gets poisoned by the handkerchief that Jane gave him for his bloody nose but this poison doesn't have the same effect because it's on a handkerchief at least that it was that is what is said because I believe Jane says it herself because we see Charles still have some mobility and is literally uh, basically throwing himself on the floor repeatedly and just trying to get to Mabel and Oliver and luckily Mabel and Oliver do find him and put him on the dog stroller that Oliver has and they go back to the basement because they hear the confession that Jane gave and is like, gas, the basement, we have to go and see what the hell she's sabotaging down in the basement. So they go downstairs to the basement and they catch freaking Jane in the act and turn Jane into the authorities. Charles gets put into the hospital and gets his stomach pumped out of all the poison that he has. A bunny goes up to Oliver and Mabel and is like, you guys can't stay in the building. You guys aren't gonna be kicked out any longer. And then Mabel tells Bunny, guess what? You're the most hated person in the building now. Not in those exact words, <laughs> but that is what she says. It cuts to Charles fully recovered now and they're all getting good things in their lives now. So all that is happening and they're celebrating on the roof one night with champagne glasses just talking and Mabel says along the lines of he, she feels like there are some loose ends that the whole case isn't yet solved fully. And they're like, eh, whatever, right? But then they're like, we need some more champagne glasses. And so she's like, you're right. I have champagne back in my apartment, so I'm gonna go get that. So Mabel goes downstairs to her apartment building while Oliver and Charles are talking becoming buddies but then they get a text and these police sirens are getting louder and louder and closer to the building their texts are from an unknown number and it says get out of the building and so that's what we see in the beginning of the first season them going down the stairs trying to get mabel and the police force storming into the building and we see mabel right there covered in blood and who's the one that's dead it is bunny and she is wearing only murders in the building merch and well there is a knitting needle that killed her mabel's knitting needle and they all three get arrested and detective williams is like don't say a word and you just see them get brought into the police car and they're driven off and that is where we get left off in that 
whole season one. I hope you like that very chaotic season one recap of Only Murders in the Building. I am super excited to start watching season two. I believe every new episode is going to be up on Tuesdays. So yeah, there is that. Yeah, this was just a quick video. So it was just, you just saw my face the whole time. And if you want to see more content about Only Murders in the Building, maybe even see me, maybe even hear my theories on who killed bunny then comment down below that you want to you want to see that type of content or give suggestions some ideas about what else i could be posting on this channel i do have some league of legends lore plans so be patient with that though <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of editing and a lot of my time and i have schoolwork. <laughs> but other than that thank you all so much for watching you can follow me on all different social media platforms or and also on different on my two other youtube channels that i have all the links are down in the description below like comment subscribe um share this video you know to, i don't know how i'm ending these videos currently let's just cut to the end screen should i should i say you have been briefed is that no i probably shouldn't <laughs> you have been briefed all right bye <laughs>